So first off, the uh, least amount of fuel that you have in it, the better, obviously, since you're dropping the tank. So right now I'm kind of under a quarter tank. Then just uh, pop your trunk on the driver's side here behind the tail light. Behind this carpet you're going to see the uh, fuel shutoff switch. Uh, it's called the inertia switch and it uh, triggers if you get in an accident and the car feels a, a g-force from getting hit and it turns the fuel pump off. So we're going to take off these little, uh, this little screw thing here and we're going to get in behind here and then unplug that sensor. So once again we're here behind the tail light inside the carpet and this is what it looks like right here. It's just this uh, thing with a little button on the top that you would push down to activate it. And then there's just a little tab here that we're going to undo. Just going to pull up on the front of it and slide it off. And uh, then we're going to start the car and eventually there will be no fuel pressure. So I just pried up on the top of this and then uh, pulled it down with both hands. Now start the car and let it idle for a few minutes or until it runs out of fuel. Shouldn't take too long, but it can take up to a few minutes. There we go. Now you can put the car in the air. So just uh, lift it up and properly secure it on jack stand so that the back end of the car is up in the air. Lifting on the back right here on the subframe connectors, and then that's also where we put the jack stands on each side. Then open up the fuel door, take off the cap. And you'll find three bolts in here that we're going to undo. One, two, and three. Ten millimeter. These three bolts uh, hold up the filler neck. And I usually will get a plastic bag and label where all these screws go, but there's not really too much hardware in this uh, fuel pump replacement. Okay, so under here by the fuel tank and the exhaust, on the tank itself you'll see this small 8mm bolt. We need to take this one off, because it's a bracket that holds that filler neck. So coming under the car, here's the exhaust. Here's some lines that are coming out of the uh, filler neck. And this line right here is kind of the breather line. It returns back up towards the cap. So there's a little piece up here that you're going to put your screwdriver in to unlock the uh, attachment. So here's what it looks like. It's just a little tab that you're going to pull out and then you'll be able to pull the line down and off of it. Okay, so right next to it there's another line here. We're just going to pull it straight on it until it comes off. So we need to get uh, inside the trunk again. We're going to take off this little securing thing here and just pulls down and then undo the other wing nut on this side like the other side was. And then once you get back in here, you'll see where the, uh, the filler neck comes in. So inside here, we're going to be going after this line right here that's coming down off it. And once again, it just pulls off, so you just lift up on it. And uh, it's a little easier to do when the fuel tank is still connected. So just disconnecting this hose. And here's the filler neck. Now we're going after the fuel filter. So this is the fuel filter right here. And first thing we're going to do is take off these tabs. Kind of just secure it, the lines. You just get a screwdriver and start prying, and you'll see that they start to come off. That. 
and then just kind of hanging there out of the way. Okay, so uh, basically you just take this tool and it wraps onto the fuel line and then, then as you close it, what it does is the tool goes into the fuel line and spreads out a clamp that's holding this on. And so then you'll be able to pull the hose off. But uh, basically just so you know, that's what you're doing is going around that line and pushing inside of here to spread the clamp to pull it off. So now we're going to take off this side over here. So this is just another one of those disconnect tools. It's the same thing. It basically goes over the line and then comes together. And so that's what we're doing here, just putting it over the line and then pushing it into this connector. So as it goes in, it spreads a clip and then you can pull the line off. Now be very careful because we took quite a bath with this. Tons of fluid is going to come out of here and uh, get you all wet. So make sure you're wearing safety goggles and um, just prepare to get a little wet. So now we're going to take this off right now uh, with this band. We're just going to loosen this with our screwdriver and that will give us more access to slide this uh, fuel filter out. So basically the fuel filter is sitting inside of a bracket here and once you get it loose it'll come out of the bracket. So now we're just going to get the uh, fuel filter out of this cradle to better work on it. So we undid this band and kind of moved it off to the side and then over on this side there's a little bit of a, a latch that you're just going to go around and out of like that. So now we're just going to pull it out of the cradle and uh, now we'll just have a little more access on it. So as you see we have our fuel disconnect line tool back on here and we're just going to push it up into this line like so and then uh, pull the fuel line off of the filter. Okay, so then you just pull the lines off, and this is the fuel filter right here. And uh, so we're just going to throw it away and put the new one in when we're... Here we are by the fuel tank again, and there's a line coming in here. And so this tab already broke, so it's kind of useless, but... Anyway, what you're supposed to do is pinch both sides of it, and then it'll allow you to then separate this line. Okay, so we're going to do this electrical line. You just push down on this tab and slide it out. So once that's released, you can separate those two. This part of the electrical connector will come down with the pump, so we have to get it off. If you tilt it, uh, you will see that you can get in here with a screwdriver and uh, get it off without breaking it. And it's just one of those Christmas tree style ones that you're just going to pry off. Under the car here on the tank, there's going to be three main 13, 13 millimeter, um, on these straps that go along the tank. So you just undo the one here, over there, and there's one on front of the passenger side, but there's not one on the driver's side. The driver's side it just is a hinge. We also have the fuel tank supported with a jack, uh, just as we're going to lower it here. And now these uh, straps will come down. Okay, so we're just starting to lower the tank now. Uh, you can see the filler neck right here that he's pulling out. 
Now, the grommet for this tends to tear, and so if you don't replace it as you take hard turns, you're going to be dumping fuel. So this is the filler neck right here that we just pulled from the tank as we were dropping the tank. If you look here, this is where it goes into the tank. And what we have here in our hand is the grommet that uh, goes around it. Now, that tends to tear and you'll spill fuel uh, as you take hard turns. So um, we bought a new one of these and I'll show you the part number on that. Um, something else to mention is there's a little bit of glue here so that as you start to lower the tank it might get hung up and if you gently pull down on it it'll come loose. Uh, there's some other lines coming right here uh, to the back of the tank and you could probably just leave everything connected if you wanted but uh, we'll probably just go ahead and pull these apart. You just separate them here. So now it's very important that you get a shot back and uh, vacuum up all the grime and everything that's going to be around us. We'll also kind of vacuum uh, the whole tank. <laughs> Next, just remove all these bolts here, going all the way around. As you loosen some of these, you'll notice more debris will kind of start getting shaken out of them. So uh, you might want to shop vacuum again, but make sure you do not shop vac any fumes of fuel into the vacuum. Just slowly pry this uh, housing up. Don't bend anything. Just be take your time. And this is going to expose our fuel pump. Okay, so this tube right here wraps under and around, so you got to make sure that it goes back in that same way. So this is an example of what's inside the tank, and it's the sump that slides down into the housing, and these tabs on the sides hold it in place, so you'll need to pull on each side like this to pull the assembly out. So here it is coming out as you can see and you want to be careful now for that float that uh, measures how much fuel is in the tank. So as we pull it out, um, you just got to be very careful. So this is how it will look as it comes out of the tank. There will be a filter sock here and the float on this side. So be careful as you angle and pull this out. Next you are going to remove each of these small tiny little screws. And they, uh, they're not in very tight. You can take them out with needle nose pliers. And it's really hard to find the right size for them. They're like four and a half millimeter, which we have here, and it's still not uh, even quite working. So just take them off with needle nose pliers. So we've taken off all the small bolts around and the little ones that hold these assemblies on. And so that will free up this this just pops off and then this has an electrical connection on it that will pull out but anyway there's there's your pump it's going to come out like this and we'll clean that we'll clean all that junk out in there but here's the pump and we'll just disconnect it here and the wiring harness and put the new one on so to remove the wiring harness from the pump you just push this little tab in and pull it off Now the pump that we're using is a little bit different, that's why we had this other assembly. This is the Ford Focus SVT pump and it's a good upgrade for the Mach 1. So, uh, But it's, it's pretty good, it's just going to plug right back in, we're not going to have to do any modifications. So you'll want to make sure that the wiring harness is going back through where it belongs. And then you plug in the new pump where it goes. And the pump goes with the sock like this so that the cap can go back on as so. Then just make sure that these two go back on top of the spout that's coming out here and the one that's on the fuel pump. 
and that it kind of twists back around and then that goes back into place. So what's going to hold these into place for those tiny little screws that we took out. And um, so you're going to have to kind of hold it like this until you can get the screws in and tighten everything down. Now that the assembly is all put back together, we're ready to lower it back in the tank. But a couple things to look out for is the float needs to go around through this opening. And then there's a bridge here that the sock is going to go underneath. So we did the float valve first to get down into the tank. And then as we lowered it in, we put a screwdriver gently against the sock to push it kind of in a vertical position and then it slid down and went back under that bridge. And now as the pump assembly lowers down in, you'll hear it click into place. There you go. So make sure that both of these tabs on the sides that we had to release in order to get it out are, are locked into their correct location. And then remember that this hose kind of does like a little, it kind of curls tuck. around. Now we're just putting these uh, bolts back on. Just remember to use the star pattern on these. Uh, you know, do them directly across from them how we are and make sure it goes on nice and snug. So here we have the replacement grommet. Um, this is the original replacements in the bag. Uh, that's the part number. And what you do is you you make sure that this rim here seats in the rim of the tank. You'll wedge it in there and get it in there and it'll form a seal. And what's really important here is, is to lube this area so that when the filler neck's going in it, it doesn't tear the new grommet. So here's uh, just a tiny bit of grease. Okay, not, not enough that would ever give you any kind of problems, but we're just putting a just a tiny bit of grease inside of this to help that filler neck slide right through it. So just kind of tuck the whole back side of the grommet in as you wedge it into the opening. There you go. That's good. Okay, so we're ready to lift the tank back up. Our main concern now is that filler neck opening to the filler neck up here. So we're gonna put the tank kind of on, a, on an angle on its side and lift it up, get that in there, and then once the filler neck is in, then we can just lift the rest of the tank up and uh, secure everything. It's also not a bad idea to put just a little bit of grease on that uh, filler neck too, but. Just remember, just a tiny bit to where you're not going to get any of it into your fuel system. Okay, guide the uh, filler neck up in to the gas door here and put those bolts back in. So we just lifted the tank back up. Um, we're putting the bolts back in, making sure that all the hoses have cleared. And then we're just going to basically plug everything back in. So plug this connector that's just under the bumper back in and then just push it back up into those holes and then in here just push this uh, line back on come inside the trunk here and put this other one back on this line right here that we had taken off Okay, we're going to put this bracket back on here that we had taken off. Just the tiny little screw that goes on here to this filler neck bracket. Just tighten that back up. Okay, so over here we have these two lines that we need to hook back up. This one on the right just squeezes into the hole. And then remember this one on the left has the clip that we had to pull out. So this clip, what we're going to do is we're going to put this hose back on. Then the clip, one little foot slides through one box, the other foot slides through the other box like this, and then it slides into place and that's what locks it 
um, when it's already on there. So we're going to throw it up on here first. So here's the new fuel filter, Ford product, and there's the part number if you want it. So FG986 Bravo. And uh, so we'll just put this on. So there's an arrow on here that indicates uh, the direction of flow uh, right there. And uh, this canister part's going to clip into that bracket, so that'll also help you know which way it goes. Okay, so I just slid the uh, filter back into its little cradle here. And uh, remember the tab on this side comes up around and it's kind of pushed on this side of the filter there. So now I'll just tighten down this ground strap and connect both of these uh, fuel line fittings back on. So on these clips there's kind of like a little hook. So just make sure it gets down in there going over the fuel line. And then you just push the other part back on. Do it on that side. Do it on this side too. And the fuel filter is now replaced. So over here on the driver's side there was a little bit of a clip that holds those two pipes that were going through the top. You just make sure it's back in place and that those two lines are okay up in there. Okay, and then don't forget to uh, plug your inertia switch back in. Otherwise you'll wonder why the car doesn't start. <laughs> okay, make sure the button is down too. Because when you get in an accident, that's what pops up. Cuts the fuel off. Okay, now the real test. Turn the key and listen for that pump to come on. There it is. <laughs> probably have a check engine light so uh, you can go to AutoZone and have them turn it off or in my case I have a tuner so I can turn it off with that. So the codes that are going to come up are going to represent that uh, unplugging of the inertia switch and so if you go to read them you're going to see that it's the fuel pump driver module which is a a little box that's in there that goes near that inertia switch so it's reading that it's not getting uh, fuel so you just uh, go through and the other one that came up was a lack of um, HO2's switch sensor so anyway just clear those two codes out have AutoZone do it if you don't have a tuner and you'll be good <laughs>